In this video, we're going to talk about deferred tax in relation to the depreciation of property, plant and equipment, or more uh, generally long-lived assets. So a classic CFA level one exam topic, something that you most likely want to get right in the exam. If that's the case, please keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. A company purchases a new machine for 900,000 euro. The machine has an estimated useful life of three years with no residual value. For accounting purposes, the machine is depreciated using the straight line method. However, for tax purposes, depreciation is charged at 50% in year one, 30% in year two, and 20% in year three. Income tax is charged at 20%. What is the deferred tax liability reported by the company in respect of the machine at the end of the second year of its operations. Okay, in this question, we're not even asked about whether there's going to be a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. We're asked for the amount. So let's um, approach this question by creating a little table where for the item of property, plant and equipment, the machine, which is obviously an asset, uh, let me write this down, machine, an asset in the balance sheet, we're going to contrast two things. It's carrying amount, i.e. the amount that does indeed appear in the balance sheet, and naturally also its tax base, so its uh, value from a tax perspective. And we're going to do this at several moments in time, so point zero, which is when the machine is require, acquired, sorry, and then uh, the subsequent three years, because we're told it has a three-year uh, estimated useful life. One, two, and three. Okay. And at each point, we're going to check whether there exists a difference, a um, temporary difference between the two uh, values. Now, when the machine is first acquired, it is, I guess, entered into the books both for tax purposes and for uh, financial reporting purposes. So its initial measurement is 900,000 over here in, in terms of the carrying amount, as well as the tax base 900. And there is no difference at all. Uh, so let me say here, temporary difference, nothing. However, starting from year one, that difference will occur because the item is depreciated under different assumptions or different bases for tax purposes and financial reporting. For financial reporting purposes, we're told the machine is depreciated using straight line. So it's going to go downwards by 300,000 every year to a level of 600, subsequently 300 at the end of the second year. And I guess it will um, be depreciated fully, so down to zero by the end of year three. For tax purposes, uh, we've got 50% in year one, 30% in year two, and 20% in year three. Now, these three uh, percentages, they add up to 100%, so they must all um, apply to the original uh, initial value. So by the, by the end of year one, we're going to have 50% depreciation down to 450,000, the tax base, and then 30% um, in year two. And if you compute 30% of 900,000, I've got my calculator here, so 900 times 30%, 0 0.3, that's going to give a, a deduction of 270. Let me maybe write this down, minus 270, which will create a new carrying amount, you know, 450 minus 270, that's going to give us 180,000 over here, the fresh carrying amount. And then the next deduction or the next reduction uh, or portion of depreciation is going to be 20% of the original amount. So 900,000 times 20%, that's easy, 180,000. Okay, which means our asset for tax purposes will also be depreciated down to zero. Now, the critical thing is to recognize the value of these differences or measure. So 600 minus 450 over here, that's 150. And then uh, 300 minus 100, that's 120. And then 
the difference ceases to exist once again. So it never existed in the first place. It doesn't exist at the very end. So in the meantime, this is just temporary. The temporary differences which exist here are a function of the fact or a result of the fact that the company depreciates in an accelerated way as compared to um, its um, the approach it takes for financial reporting purposes. It's only a temporary acceleration or speed up in one of these treatments and it's going to, let's say, become um, neutralized at the very end. However, think about it uh, in terms of what this creates, a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. If in the early years you accelerate depreciation for tax purposes relative to depreciation for financial reporting purposes, you already use up the, the tax benefits of tax depreciation. So in those early years, especially in year one, you depreciate much quicker than you would for uh, financial reporting purposes. This creates you, this gives you more of a tax advantage in the early years, but it means there will be less tax advantages to be uh, consumed or um, realized in the subsequent years. So in the subsequent years, as a result of this accelerated depreciation, you'll have to pay more tax. Let me write this down. More tax to pay in later years because you've used, already used up the benefit associated with accelerated depreciation when you, for example, in year one over here depreciated 450,000 and this was a tax deductible expense. And this will naturally mean you've got, you're going to have a deferred tax liability. Now, this can also be realized by from the fact that according to some of the rules which I gave in the initial videos uh, for this topic, whenever you're dealing with an asset, and remember this is a machine, so absolutely an asset in the balance sheet, if the carrying amount, let me write this down over here, is higher than tax base, as is the case here actually all the time except for um, 0 0.0 and 0 0.3. Uh, so in years one and two, we've got a carrying amount which is higher than the tax base. And we know this is a temporary difference, but this temporary difference is of a taxable nature. That was the rule that I introduced somewhere in an earlier video. That's why we've got a deferred tax liability. And the way to create, uh, sorry, the way to compute the size of that deferred tax liability is simply to take the size of the difference in this case, it would be zero, for example, and multiply by the tax rate, which in the example where it's told is 20%. So obviously zero times 20% means you've got a zero deferred tax liability over here at 0, 0.0. But at the end of year one, you take this 150, multiply by 20%, and you get a deferred tax asset of uh, 150 times 20%. That's going to be 30,000. Then uh, year two, take this, multiply by 20%, and you know 12 times two, that's going to be 24,000. And then in the end, it disappears and becomes zero. Every time you either create a deferred tax liability or make it become smaller, you're doing this via the PL. So when the li liability is created in the balance sheet, liabilities grow, you're going to have to have an offsetting effect in the P&L. So growth in liabilities means an additional expense in the deferred tax liability line, so a hit to P&L. But then when the liability becomes smaller in year two, sorry, uh, in year two, yes, and then ultimately even smaller in year three because it goes down to zero, when your liability becomes less and less and less, the PL will have to have something positive to offset that effect. Okay, so everything goes via PL, at least when it comes to temporary differences resulting from um, depreciation uh, under different methods for tax and financial reporting purposes. What's the answer to the question? What is the deferred tax liability reported by the company in respect of the machine at the end of the second year of its operations? So second year is over here and we've got 24. Yeah, and that corresponds to answer A. So answer A would be the correct answer to this question.